The Davenport Automatic Screw Machine. Basic identification. This is the Davenport Model B five spindle automatic screw machine. The Davenport screw machine, with proper care and maintenance, is designed to manufacture precision, high volume screw machine parts year after year. At first glance, this machine looks complex. However, after completing the instruction program, you will realize that operating a Davenport screw machine is not as difficult as it first appears. Subsequent tapes will give you, among other things, instructions on stocking, tooling, and care of the machine. A quiz will be given at the end of each chapter in the moderator's guide. What you will be seeing now is an introductory description of the Davenport screw machine. The Davenport automatic screw machine is equipped with guards to prevent the coolant from splashing on the operator or on the floor when the machine is in operation. The videotape shows the machine with its two side and top oil guards both on and off the machine. The front of the machine. The front of the machine is called the operator's position. Most of the functions you will perform as an operator are done from or at the front of the machine. An easy way to identify the front of the machine is to note the large hand wheel at the bottom right as you face the machine. The right end of the machine. The right end of the machine is to your right as you face the machine from the front or operator's position. As you face the right end of the machine, note the feed gear box that is located at the bottom right. At the right bottom center is the chip conveyor. Chips or residue from the material are carried out of the machine by the chip conveyor. The rear of the machine. The rear of the Davenport automatic screw machine is directly opposite the front. The main power box is located to your right as you face the rear of the machine. The left end of the machine. The left end of the machine is to your left as you face the machine from the operator's position in front. If you face the left end straight on, you will notice the motor at the bottom left. You will also notice the long wire case carrier which extends from the left end. The wire case carrier is the container for the bar stock or material from which workpieces will be machined. The three stage control box. As you face the front of the machine, you will notice a box with colored buttons to your left. This is the three stage control box, which you will use to start, stop, or jog the machine. At the top of the three stage control box is the start button, normally colored green. At the bottom is the stop button, normally colored red. In the center is the two position selector switch, marked run and jog. There are two ways to start the machine. To start the machine, turn the two position selector switch to run, then push the start button. When the switch is on run, the machine will continue to run, even after you have released pressure on the start button. Another way to start the machine is to turn the two position selector switch to jog and then push the start button. The machine will run as you push in the start button. When you release pressure on the start button, the machine will stop. This mode allows the machine to be run for short intervals. There are also two ways to stop the machine. The first way is simply to push the stop button. A safer way, however, is to turn the selector switch from run to jog. This will not only stop the machine, but have it ready to jog as you begin your next operation. Jogging the machine is important. You will jog the machine to stock it, to set tools, etc. 
You will learn more about this later. Remember, to jog the machine, turn the selector switch to jog. Then push the start button. The machine will run as long as the start button is pushed in. When you release the start button, the machine will stop. The starting clutch lever. The starting clutch lever is also located at the front of the machine or operator's position, just left of center. This lever is used to engage and disengage the starting clutch, which in turn engages and disengages the cycling mechanism on the machine. When the machine is cycling, the revolving head is indexing and the tools are working on the stock to make finished work pieces. To cycle the machine, first turn the selector switch on the three-stage control box to run, then push the start button. Once the machine is running, engage the starting clutch by moving the clutch lever to the left. This will start the machine cycle. To disengage the starting clutch, move the clutch lever back to the right. This will stop the machine cycle. It is very important to disengage the starting clutch before the machine is switched off or stopped. So remember, always disengage the starting clutch before turning off the machine, although in an emergency, the stop button may be used. The work spindles and revolving head. The Davenport automatic screw machine has five revolving work spindles. Each work spindle holds a bar of stock or material. The work spindles always revolve counterclockwise. These five work spindles are all contained in the revolving head, also known as the spindle carrier. The revolving head also turns, indexes, counterclockwise. The revolving head stops and is locked after each index, or at each position, although the work spindles keep turning. The head stops so that the tools can perform their function on the stock or material. This is how work pieces are machined. Tool spindles and the stationary head. The stationary head is located directly opposite the revolving head. It is called stationary because, unlike the revolving head, it does not turn or index. The stationary head has positions for five tool spindles. These tool spindles contain tools which machine the stock held by the work spindles in the revolving head. The coolant system. Coolants are used to lengthen the life of the tools by reducing heat caused by friction when the tools are cutting. Various types of oils are used as coolants. Each Davenport automatic screw machine has its own self-contained coolant system. The coolant reservoir is in the base of the machine. The coolant is brought from the reservoir by a pump located on the rear left side of the machine if viewed from the operator's position. The coolant is pumped up to a manifold, which distributes the coolant through individual lines to the cutting edge of each tool. The coolant system has a main shutoff, and each individual line has its own shutoff. The lubricating system. The Davenport automatic screw machine is equipped with a Bezier lubricating system. This system pumps lubricating oil to all vital parts of the machine. The lubricating system on a Davenport automatic screw machine is a two-stage system. One stage is low pressure with chrome lines. The other is high pressure with copper lines. The low pressure system continually lubricates all the main bearings in the machine that revolve at higher RPMs. This is a constant system. The high pressure system is a periodic system. At set intervals, the high pressure system lubricates parts of the machine 
that are operating at lower RPMs. Each of these systems has its own gauge. The gauges indicate the oil pressure in each system. The low pressure gauge, which is on the left as you face the front of the machine, should have a constant reading of between 10 and 15 pounds while the machine is running. The high pressure gauge, which is on the right of the low pressure gauge, will only show a reading every 20 minutes when this system engages automatically. The indicator should then show a minimum of 50 pounds. The Davenport automatic screw machine also has oil fittings that must be lubricated manually. The videotape will point out where some of these oil fittings are located.